Hey, this is Mad Matt from Budget Boosting. The last video we covered on how to read OBD1 codes on Forge from 1980 to 1995. It works for all the Fords. Well, what we found in that code reading was that the throttle position sensor is bad. Well, in this particular car, this truck, the Broncos and the F-250s on the 302s and 351 Windsors, the throttle body and the throttle position sensor are different than most other cars. Most other cars you can walk right up and go, oh, there's the throttle position sensor. Like, we'll walk over to a Z and I'll show you how easy it is to find a throttle position sensor on most cars. Okay, you walk up to this car, 1986 300ZX Turbo, and you find the throttle. Hey, there's my throttle. Directly across from the throttle is the throttle position sensor. Boom, there it is. Easy to find. We'll walk up to a Buick, and I'll show you the same thing. Okay, we'll walk up to the Buick. Look at the throttle body. You find the throttle. And there's the throttle position sensor on the other side. Opposite side of the throttle. Most cars are that simple. But these 1985 through 1996 Ford series Broncos and F-250s, they had to be different. They're harder to find. They changed the mounting of their throttle body so the throttle position sensor is very different for example let's look here's a an 89 Ford F250 most people go oh there it is right on the side right well no Ford mounted their throttle body most throttle bodies are mounted horizontally or like this Ford, since they have a high-rise manifold, turned the throttle body like this. Therefore, the throttle is on the top. And remember I said when I'm looking for a throttle position sensor, wherever the throttle is on the opposite end is the throttle position sensor. Well, here is the throttle on this Ford. Throttle position sensor is on the opposite end, way the heck down there. Not like all the other cars I just showed you just now. They had to be different. They put their throttle body mounted like this, vertically. So, opposite end of the throttle is the throttle position sensor. Which means it looks like we're going to have to remove this entire throttle body or everything leading to the throttle position sensor to take it off and change it. So. This is going to be fun. I already took off the first thing already to make access to the throttle. So, took this off. Okay, next I'm going to take off the intake tubes since they're in the way. I've already got the air filter off since I made my air filter real easy to remove because it's free flow. <laughs> I got a free flow air cleaner. I did my own intake mod and saved myself a bunch of money, which you'll see in another video. Free intake mod. Here we go. I'm taking off the intake with a screwdriver. Okay, so far what I've done is I've removed the intake assembly. Then I gently remove the cruise control and the uh, transmission kickdown cable, the cruise control, and the throttle gently from the throttle body. Now I'm just removing various plugs and stuff to gain access to taking off the throttle body. Got to get this little guy out of the way here. See how they connect things to the throttle body just to irritate you. There we go. Get that out of the way. Another vacuum line out of the way. Oh, it broke right off. How nice typical old rubber. When that happens, you just cut a nice fresh end and reconnect. Okay, get that out of the way. Here's where the throttle position sensor actually is. Six o'clock position is wherever I said the throttle is. Directly across is the throttle position sensor. And here's the plug for it. So 
Well, you have to take this off too. This cooling line. They put cooling lines inside the throttle bodies too. Get this out of the way if it'll go without busting. Take this off. Yeah, these like to be stubborn. But once you get the clamp off, usually the line comes off with a little bit of coolant. It's a cooling. You put a cooling port inside of the throttle body to so-called keep it cool. But when the engine's hot, I really don't believe it keeps it that cool. <laughs> There's another little thingamahoo that needs to come off. These stupid little steel brackets for nothing. You don't need it. It's a piece of junk. You don't need it. Okay. Gradually getting stuff out of the way. There's a lower cooling line too. They just keeps getting better, don't it? Get this vacuum line out of the way. There's my throttle position way down there. Doesn't look like I'll be able to change it without pulling the throttle body, see? But I will unplug it. Here's my plug. Play with the clip, unplug it. Most of the time the clips always break because they're cheap, brittle plastic and after, you know, 25, 26 years, this brittle plastic just, as soon as you start to flex it, it goes bloop. But it doesn't matter because you can just plug it right back in like nobody's business. It's not a big deal. It's just cheap plastic. So you just plug it back in and there you go, it'll stay. You just don't have that plastic clip to deal with next time. And it looks like I'm going to have fun with this bottom water clamp because it's got one of these unique clips to it. See? Look at this clip. It's not like a typical, you know, this is the good kind. You just tighten it, loosen it. This is the bad kind. It's a one-time use. So I'm going to have to replace it with one of these type of easy adjusting hose clamps because the factory likes to use these. These are a nightmare to take on and put back on again. They're a real pain. So we'll probably take a cut here. I'm going to remove that and I'm going to remove the rest of these bolts here. Since I've got most of the stuff out of the way of the throttle body, I'm just going to remove these mounting bolts right here. Mounting bolts and this cooling line here, which is going to take a while because it's got that special clamp I'm going to have to pry off. And I'm going to make a pause here and basically take the throttle body off the rest of the way and then show you how to change the sensor and then reverse the process of putting it back on. You know, it's always easier to, if you want to, mark your lines with some masking tape and some pencils. You know, you take a Sharpie pen and you put some tape on there and mark what this thing is and where it goes, but I pretty much know where these go. But it's easier if you mark them. So when you put them all back on, you know exactly where your stuff's plugged into. So we're gonna take a pause now. I'm gonna remove the rest of the throttle body and I'll show you how to change the throttle position sensor. Hey, we've almost got the throttle body off. What a lot of work that was. But see, I'm getting the last bolt right now that's holding on the throttle body. And at the very bottom of the throttle body is the mission we're trying to accomplish here. This one little throttle position sensor on the hardest place which you'd never remove without taking the entire throttle body off. They couldn't be like everybody else and have the throttle bodies mounted like this. See? Then you can get to it. Oh, and there's a happy gasket, too. That's broken, of course. Hey, hey, hey! All right, the news keeps getting better. But, while these throttle bodies off are the best time to take some carb cleaner and clean them out, which I'm sure I'm going to do before I put it back on. But first, without any ado, there's my throttle position sensor. Two screws. Here's my new Duralast throttle position sensor. So remove the old, put on the new, and work on putting, I'll clean up my throttle body. I'll probably do that before I change it. Clean up my throttle body, put it all back on, and this job will be done. So, okay, I'll just change throttle bodies real quick. It's not hard. <laughs> not now that I got the throttle body off, it's not that hard. But I guarantee if you went to any shop, they'd say, well, we'll charge you about 
$500 to change a little tiny incy bincy little throttle position sensor. So this throttle position sensor cost me about yeah, lifetime warranty, around about 30 something dollars. 30 something dollars in my time and I changed this throttle position sensor out where if you go to a dealer or any mechanic shop they'd probably give you the average $500 price to change this easy part. Well you saw I had some fun with it taking all the stuff and the plugs and all the vacuum lines and the cooling lines taking all this stuff off and I'm sure I'm gonna have to buy a $5 gasket but hey $40, $50 in parts and you know about an hour of my time but once you've done one throttle body and you know what they're all about you can do any throttle body but the easiest way to find a throttle body look for the throttle the opposite end there's your throttle position sensor there you go this will work on all your Ford 302's all your Ford 351's and I believe the 460's have the exact same combination because they have the high-rise manifold here the high-rise intake manifold so they adjust the throttle body differently most throttle bodies are this way see most are like this or like this whom, 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 whom. most are just like this so it's easy to get the throttle position sensor but Ford went and did it like this so you have to take this off in order to get to it. So that's why the manufacturers, the dealerships, and the garages are going to charge you quite a bit of money to do this because you have to take all this stuff off and all these vacuum lines and cooling lines and all that good stuff. So I'm going to change the throttle position sensor now. All this work for just this little sensor. And of course they use Phillips tips because they're easy to round off and go oops. So I'm going to spray a little liquid wrench on it first see if I can get these to penetrate and come off easier there we go the liquid wrench goes a long way well, I'd like to put this on something like a vice or something something to hold it in place bit of a vice work now that I got a nice little vice I can use it for something yes we all have our vices <laughs> and this one is mine this will hold everything in place while I attack the sensor and I'll put a rag around it just to make sure I don't collapse anything because, you know, I'd hate to crush this expensive throttle body and then have to pay a lot of money, so I'll put it between some lint-free cloths or towels or rags or whatever you want to put it between. little easier to hold in place yep I knew this was going to be a problem they're on really tight yeah they're on really tight you know what this little tool is this is an impact screwdriver so when you got really tight little screws like this it's designed to tap it a little bit with a hammer and give it slight turns at the same time so it'll help loosen these stubborn Phillips screws that don't want to come off with a conventional screwdriver because they're corroded and they're so good even though I sprayed liquid wrench they're still in there real good and they're just gonna round the Phillips tips then I won't get them out that's why factories put you know Phillips tips in there because they know they're gonna round out they know you're gonna have a pain with it and they know you're gonna get frustrated and go you know what I'm going to deal with hell with this I can't take this no more ah you know but I just find myself a nice little tip it fits fairly tight this one might be a bit tighter let's see that's pretty tight I'll pick this one
they don't taste good, trust me. Put that in here. And just give it a little tap. Little tap. Now let's see if it'll come off. Look at that. The impact screwdriver saves the day again. Now they come loose. So just remember you get some stubborn Phillips screwdrivers. You can get these at AutoZone or Craig and O'Reilly's, any of the great auto parts stores, and get yourself a nice impact screwdriver. Comes with uh, lots of different tips. Real nice because when you have a hard time taking off those stubborn Phillips tips, they're very easy to round off. But before they round off, use an impact screwdriver. They come right off now. You got so much more mechanical advantage with this. See how the Phillips screw is coming right off now to change that stubborn throttle position sensor Phillips screws. They're really making me work for this throttle position sensor, aren't they? But hey, I'm saving myself $500, so, you know. I feel a little bit better when I think about it like that. I'm saving myself $500! I feel a little bit better now. $500, oh yeah, see? It was corrosion all the time. See the corrosion right there? Corrosion, or they probably put, they probably put some sticky compound in there to make it really hard for me to remove. Yeah, that's real nice of them, huh? See all that? That's either corrosion or thread lock. Thread locks usually comes in red, so it could be some thread lock. They put those in there really tight for a reason, so you get frustrated and give up. Well, I don't give up so easy. There's my old throttle position sensor. Oh, look at that thing broke real good. Look at that. All the pieces, because it's great quality plastic, see? The actual pieces broke right inside. That's why the throttle position failed. The plastic inside fell apart. Gotta love it. Good quality plastic. Make everything out of great quality plastic. Well, this to me, this is garbage. It's getting thrown away. And get my new throttle position sensor. New Duralast lifetime warranty throttle position sensor. See, those are the things that broke. Those little plastic gears. They broke right inside. So, piece of junk. Do I have a gas gun? No. Okay. Now, before I put these screws in, I'm going to do what the factory didn't. I'm going to give them a little lubricant. So they don't come flying out again so easy. Little liquid wrench. And the next time I have to remove this, it'll be easier. Okay. Got your little keyway. Got a little guy here. Put this thing in here gently. And find a little groove. Find my proper groove. Hey. Well, we finally got it done. We cleaned the throttle body out. Got it fairly clean. A lot better than it looked before. I ran out of carb cleaner, but pretty much did the trick. It was all caked with a bunch of stuff and finally got it opened up nice and clean now, so it's much better than before. Installed the new throttle position sensor. It's all installed in the throttle body. All that's left to do is buy a new gasket and put it back on just like it was before, so I'm not going to show that part because it's pretty much just the reverse of what we've done. So, brand new throttle position sensor. Here's the old nasty one that busted all the plastic broke off. Put the new one inside the throttle body. And there you have it. How to change a throttle position sensor on all these 86 through 96 Fords with the 351s, the 302, and the 460s on all these trucks. The F-Series trucks and the Broncos, they all have this same throttle body configuration where the throttle's on top and the throttle position sensor's on the bottom. Not like the other cars where they're like this. So, hope you learned something good and if you like us, like us on Facebook and like us on YouTube. Subscribe to our YouTube page. Check out our budget boosting website 
Look at our budget boosting stickers. Budget boost your ride today for 20 bucks. Free shipping on eBay. Buy it now auctions. And like always, knowledge is power. It's horsepower. And every time it pauses, that's a new number. So we're gonna look for the flashes, count the flashes, write them down on paper. When it pauses, that's a new number. Count the flashes, write down that number of flashes as a number. We'll do that so on and so forth until the check engine light stops flashing. So we're gonna start again. 